Hi, um, in this very short piece, we will look at the following. We will calculate the time it will take for the projectile to reach maximum height, as well as we will calculate the maximum height. Now, if time permits, we will look at the relationship between the angle of projection, theta, and the angle of elevation, alpha, sorry, um, phi. Now, the angle of projection is different from the angle of elevation, which is basically the angle between a straight line between the point of projection to the, to the maximum height and the horizontal. So let me recap the main objectives of this short lesson. We will calculate the maximum height and then look at the factors that determine the maximum height of a projectile motion. We will calculate the time it takes to reach the maximum height of the projectile. Then we will look at the relationship between the angle of elevation alpha and the angle of projection theta. And this is really an important application. What do we know? We know that at maximum height, the velocity in the y direction is zero. Vy is equal to Voy minus Gt all of this is equal to zero. So, T max, which is the time to reach maximum height, therefore is equal to V O Y divided by G, which is the same as V O sine theta divided by G. So this right here is the time to reach maximum height. Because the projectile path is symmetrical in time, it would mean that the total time of flight is just twice the time to reach maximum height. Therefore, the total time of flight t is just 2t max which is equal to 2 v naught sine theta all divided by g. This gives us the total time of flight. Bear with me if you notice the total time of flight or the time of flight depends on two important factors. The acceleration due to gravity and uh, initial vertical velocity. For a given planet such as Earth, G is constant, fairly constant. That means that the determining factor for the time of flight and subsequently the maximum height actually is just the initial vertical velocity. So if you launch two projectile at the same angle, one with a higher initial vertical velocity and one at a lower initial vertical velocity, the one at the higher initial vertical velocity will reach first and higher, as I will later on prove to you. So, um, <clears throat> generally, y is equal to v naught t sine theta minus one half g t squared. So y max therefore will be equal to v naught t max sine theta minus one half g t max squared. So what will we do? All we have to do is take the expression for T max and substitute it in terms 
in this expression, if we do that, y max will become v naught y, no, yeah, v naught, sorry, t max is v o y divided by So we will have here V O sin theta of a G sin theta minus one half G V naught sin theta of a G all squared. So we just have to simplify this expression. So this means that y naught will be equal to v o squared sine theta divided by g minus v o squared sine squared theta there's a square there all divided by 2g which is equal to v naught squared sine squared theta over g is is common so we have here v naught squared sine squared theta over g bracket one minus half one minus half is just half so this gives us y max all equal to v naught squared sine squared theta divided by 2g. This gives us the expression for the maximum height. Another way to express the maximum height is y max will be equal to v naught sine theta of a g all squared g this right here is the time to reach maximum height so we can write this as t max squared there is a 2 divided by 2 g divided by 2 So um, this would mean that T max squared is equal to 2 Y max divided by G. In other words, T max is equal to the square root of 2 Y max divided by G. We saw this earlier, but the reason I love this expression. It basically tells us that the time to reach maximum height is proportional to maximum height. In other words, if you have two projectiles, this is A, this is B, which one will reach the ground first. Obviously, based on this, on this expression, the maximum height of A is greater than the maximum height of B. That would mean that T max of A is greater than T max of B. Therefore, A will spend more time in flight 
compared to B simply because the maximum height of A is greater than the maximum height of B. Which doesn't really seem obvious, isn't it? Thank you.